Shakir is the most successful Latin American singer on the world pop scene. A songwriter, a philanthropist, and just a wonderful person, today we'll tell you how Shakira reached the heights of fame and became a favorite of the public, thanks to her talent and hard work. Shakira, how the Colombian pop diva lives and how she spends her millions. Shakira Isabel Mabarak Rapol was born on February 2, 1977, in the Colombian city of Barraquilla into a wealthy family. The future pop diva's father, William, is Lebanese, and her mother, Nidia, has Spanish and Italian roots. The future star is the only child in the family, but she has eight half-brothers and sisters from her father's previous marriages. Shakira grew up a gifted child. At one and a half years old, she knew the alphabet. At three, she could read and write. And at four, she was completely ready for school. The parents were proud of their daughter's achievements, so they decided to have her abilities tested by specialists, who after a series of studies, concluded that the girl was a child prodigy. Looking ahead, it is worth noting that Shakira's IQ is currently 140, which is an indicator of genius and a record among the stars of world pop music. In addition, she speaks six languages. The father owned a jewelry store, and in his spare time, he wrote various stories. He passed down his talent to Shakira, and at four, she wrote her first poem. And at seven, she asked her parents to buy her a typewriter. Many of the girl's works form the basis of the now famous tracks. She was also fond of painting, so her parents predicted that their daughter would either become a great writer or an artist, but they were wrong. One day, four-year-old Shakira found herself with her father in an ethnic restaurant, where a dancer performed a belly dance to oriental motifs. The girl was so impressed by what she saw that she climbed onto the table and started repeating the moves, which caused a round of applause among the guests. Having received incredible pleasure from public attention, she decided she would become a performer. Shakira studied at a Catholic school, and as early as elementary school, took part in creative activities, at the same time, the girl enrolled in the school choir, although she didn't attend it for long, since the choir conductor once said that her singing was like the bleeding of a goat. Fortunately, Shakira didn't give up and began to practice singing and dancing with even greater enthusiasm. At eight, the girl wrote the first song, Tus Gafes Ascoris, Your Dark Glasses, and dedicated to her father, who wore dark glasses for years to hide his grief over his eldest son's death. It is worth noting that William is a wonderful father who spares neither time nor money for raising his children. However, for Shakira to learn to appreciate what she had, the man once took her to a local park to show how orphans lived there. What she saw remained in her memory forever, and she decided that when she became famous, she would help those in need. She kept her word, but more on that later. At 10, Shakira won her first talent show, after which she started getting invites to various events in her hometown, where she earned initial public recognition. At one of the competitions, theater producer Monica Ariza spotted her and decided to promote the young talent. Monica organized auditions for the girl, and one of them was a success. The Colombian division of Sony Music signed a contract with 13-year-old Shakira. The singer's debut album, titled Magia, was released in 1991 and consisted of nine songs written by Shakira. Even though the album was not commercially successful, the singer gained popularity at home. At that time, the young girl fell in love for the first time. Her partner was a neighborhood boy, Oscar Prado, but after several years, the feelings gradually died down. In February 1993, Shakira represented Colombia at a music festival in Chile, where she took third place. Interestingly, one of the judges was 20-year-old Ricky Martin, who gave his vote to the girl. In March of the same year, the singer's second album, Peligro, was released, which turned out to be a commercial failure, just like the previous one. At that time, Shakira was disappointed in herself and decided to take a break from her music career to finish school. Since then, her first albums have been discontinued and are now considered not official, but rather promotional. After graduating from school, Shakira moved with her mother to the Colombian capital, Bogota, 
In 1994, she got the lead role in the series El Oasis, a Colombian reinterpretation of Romeo and Juliet, and even performed the title song of the telenovela. By the way, this was not Shakira's first appearance on the screen. She had previously had cameo roles in various TV series. At the same time, Sony planned to terminate the contract with the singer, but she presented the song Donde Estas Corazón, which instantly became a hit. And after that, Sony decided to give Shakira another chance and finance her third album, Pies Descalzos, which was released in 1995 in Latin America and a year later in the USA. The album skyrocketed to the top of the charts and sold more than 5 million copies. It included 11 songs, among which was the single Estoy Aquí. In 1996, the singer went on an international tour and became the first Colombian to conquer the world. In the same year, Shakira received awards in the categories Album of the Year, Video of the Year, and the Best New Artist at the Billboard Latin Music Awards. In 1997, it became known that the singer was dating actor Asvaldo Rios. The lovers hid their relationship and practically didn't appear together in public. Even though the couple was called the most beautiful in Latin America, their relationship lasted only eight months. Interestingly, at that time, Shakira was offered the role of Elena in The Mask of Zorro, which she refused, thinking she didn't speak English well enough. As a result, the role went to actress Catherine Zeta-Jones. In 1998, the singer's fourth album, Donde Están Los Landrines, was released, the title of which translates to Where Are the Thieves? Shakira came up with it after an incident at an airport when unknown people stole most of her belongings, including new song lyrics, which forced her to start working on the album from scratch. The album reached number 131 on the Billboard 200 chart and held first place in the U.S. Latin Albums chart for 11 weeks. Among the 11 compositions, the song Ciega, Sardamuda, was the most popular, especially among girls who started imitating Shakira's style by braiding their hair just like her. Since then, it has sold over 7 million copies worldwide and 1.5 million in the U.S. alone, making the record one of the best-selling albums in Spanish in the States. In 1999, Shakira was nominated for a Grammy for the first time in the category Best Latin Rock or Alternative Album and also the MTV Video Music Award in the category Favorite International Artist for the song Ojo Sasi, which she won. With the same song, the pop diva performed at the Latin American Grammy ceremony where she was nominated in five categories, two of which she won. At that time, not only her music career was gaining momentum, but also her personal life. In 2000, Shakira began dating lawyer Antonio de la Rua, the son of the then president of Argentina. He became not only the singer's lover, but also her business manager. In 2001, Shakira released a live album recorded during her performance on MTV Unplugged, which sold five million copies. The commercial success was also solidified by the Grammy Award in the category Best Latin Pop Album. After reaching such heights, the singer decided to conquer the international arena. In the same year, she released her fifth studio and first English language album, Laundry Service, which included 13 songs, among which Objection and Whenever Wherever were particularly popular. Whenever. The latter reached sixth place on the Hot 100 in the USA and not only made Shakira famous all over the world, but also became her signature song. Many fans were unhappy that their favorite singer had chosen American pop music over her authentic folk motifs. Nevertheless, the album received many awards and with more than 20 million copies sold, has become the most successful in her career and remains so to this day. At the end of 2002, the singer went on an international tour for six months. 
during which she gave more than 60 concerts in different parts of the world and managed to earn about $72 million. At the end of the tour, a live album, Live and Off the Record, was released, which reached number one on the Top Music Videos chart in 2004. In 2005, Shakira released her sixth album, Fiacion Oral, Volume 1, in Spanish. The album reached platinum status 11 times and won 15 awards, including the next Grammy. It has also become commercially successful. For example, in Mexico, the entire stock was sold out on the first day. Among the 12 tracks of the album, the most successful track was the passionate duet with Spanish singer Alejandra Sanz, La Tortura. In the same year, the singer's seventh album, Oral Fixation, Volume 2, came out, a continuation of the previous one, which included songs only in English. The album failed to achieve great success in the U.S., but the single Hips Don't Lie, featuring Wyclef Jean, was a smash hit, becoming the best-selling single in the last 10 years. Oh, baby, when you talk like I, you make a woman go mad. In 2006, Shakira went on to a concert tour that lasted more than a year and became the longest and most expensive in her career. The singer gave 116 concerts in 37 countries around the world. In 2007, the artist recorded a duet with Beyonce, Beautiful Liar, which set a Billboard Hot 100 chart record. The single skyrocketed from 94th to 3rd place, which at that time was the biggest climb in the chart's history. At the beginning of 2008, Shakira ended up in fourth place in Forbes' ranking of the highest paid performers. A few months later, she signed a 10-year contract for $300 million with Live Nation, the largest concert organizer. The following year, Shakira starred in the TV series Ugly Betty, where she played herself. She also released her eighth studio album, She Wolf, in which the single with the same name reached the top of the Latin American charts and achieved worldwide success. At the same time, it became known that the singer's personal life wasn't as smooth. And after 11 years of being in a relationship with Antonio, they broke up by mutual consent. During this whole time, the couple wasn't officially married. In many interviews, the girl has repeatedly stated that a piece of paper is not important to her. However, according to some reports, Shakira wasn't satisfied with the marriage contract, which her lover's father demanded her to sign. The concerns were not unfounded, because a few years after the breakup, Antonio sued the singer with a demand to pay $100 million compensation for his contribution to her music career. Fortunately, the court rejected the claim of the pop diva's ex-boyfriend. In 2010, Shakira launched her perfume line with three fragrances, S by Shakira, Dance, and Love Rock. And in the same year, the Colombian was honored to record the official song for the FIFA World Cup in South Africa. The groovy track, Waka Waka, was successful and reached the top 20 in the world charts. This is Africa. Tami, nami, na, eh, eh. On the set of the video, the girl met the Barcelona defender, Gerard Piquet, who fell in love with her. They were able to see each other for the second time only during a festive dinner in honor of the winning team. Piquet admitted that he won the championship not only for the title, but also for the sake of seeing the pop diva again. That's when the relationship started, but it became public only a year later. Interestingly, the lovers were born on the same day, only Shakira is 10 years older than her partner. In the fall of 2010, the singer presented her ninth studio album, Salé El Sol, after which she went on an international tour. The song Loca was received the best by the fans. And I'm crazy, but you like it. Loca, loca, loca. In 2012, Shakira took part in the American show The Voice, replacing Christina Aguilera in the mentor's chair. With her appearance, the ratings of the show significantly increased, 
and the pop diva earned $12 million for her participation. Meanwhile, the artist's relationship with PK reached a new level. In 2012, Shakira moved in with her lover in Barcelona, and a year later gave birth to their son Milan. Family life made changes to the singer's music career. Due to the birth of a child, the release of her 10th album, Shakira, on which she began working in 2011, was postponed to 2014. One of the album's songs was reworked for the FIFA World Cup, and the track, La La La, performed together with Carlina Brown, became the second anthem of the World Cup. In 2015, Shakira gave birth to her second son, Sasha, and the following year, she voiced the gazelle in the cartoon Zootopia. Initially, her character looked a little different, but at Shakira's request, the gazelle's hips were enlarged. In 2017, the singer's 11th album, El Dorado, was released, the main hit of which was the track Chantaje, featuring Colombian singer Maluma. Puro, puro chantaje, puro, puro chantaje. The record brought Shakira the third Grammy Award, which made her the only Latin American artist to achieve such results. In 2018, the singer went on a world tour, and in 2020, together with Jennifer Lopez, she performed at halftime of the Super Bowl, to which 103 million people tuned in. Today, the singer continues to make music and is working on another album. Recently, she presented the single Don't You Worry with Black Eyed Peas and David Guetta. Gonna be alright, everything's gonna be alright. It also became known that in June of this year, the pop diva broke up with her spouse and they're now fighting for custody of the children. According to some reports, the reason was the numerous infidelities of the soccer player. Soon, Shakira plans to return to the USA. As of today, the pop diva's fortune is estimated at $300 million, which she earned through music, TV projects, and advertising contracts. Shakira appeared in advertisements for brands such as Pepsi, Activia, Pandora, Oral-B, Nokia, Sony Ericsson, Angry Birds Game, and many others. And last year, she sold the publishing rights to 145 of her songs to a British investment company. According to some reports, the transaction amount exceeds $100 million. The singer owns expensive real estate in different parts of the world. In 2012, together with PK, she bought a house in Barcelona for $5.8 million, where the star couple lived with their children. Orange trees grow on the terrace, and the house has several bedrooms, a living room, and a library. Before meeting the soccer player, Shakira lived in Miami. The singer bought the Snow White Villa back in 2001. A building with an area of about 8,600 square feet has a spacious kitchen and living room, six bedrooms, and a room for rewards. Outside, there is a terrace with a bar and a huge swimming pool. A few years ago, the singer put their property up for sale for $11 million. In addition, Shakira owns a house in Colombia, a villa in Cyprus, as well as the island of Bonds Cay in the Bahamas. The latter was bought together with her friends in 2005 for $16 million. A resort area was supposed to be built on the site, but the business plan, the cost of which is approximately $485 million, has not yet been implemented. The pop diva also owns a collection of cars, including Audi A7 Sportback, Mercedes-Benz SLK 250, Tesla Model S, BMW X6, Audi Q7, and Mercedes-Benz SL550 for $115,000. It is known that Shakira also owns a private jet. The singer spends a significant share of her fortune on charity. Back in the late 1990s, she founded a charity foundation where she sends 50% of her payouts to help orphans and poor families. One time, Shakira starred in a champagne commercial and all of the $660,000 earned, she gave to the construction of two schools in Colombia and Haiti. She is also a UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador, and last year, together with Prince William, released the documentary, The Earthshot Prize, Repairing Our Planet. 
In 2011, Shakira received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and in 2013, she appeared in the ranking of the most influential women in the world. Barbie dolls were produced in her image, and a metal statue was erected in her native Colombia in honor of the pop diva. All of this suggests that Shakira managed not only to achieve commercial success in her music career, but also earn the love of millions. Do you like the Colombian singer? If you like the video, leave a like and also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss anything interesting.